Hello, I'm Melanie at the Vancouver Yoga Center in Vancouver, Washington, USA. And I'm here with Nathan. He's one of our students at the studio who's agreed to help me do this tutorial on handstand. So this is for people who are newer to handstand. They're learning to kick up at the wall and some of the fundamental um, setups for that. But first, getting in your hands, getting some basic um, prep work. So downward dog is one of our first basic prep works for handstands. So just come to hands and knees and walk the knees behind you a few inches and then take your downward dog from there, hips up and back. So getting in, many of you who have been doing yoga for a while have probably done a bunch of downward dogs and we're not gonna go into downward dog as a tutorial today, but that could be one for later on. But just know that this is your first inversion. Um, it's your first forward bend. It's actually a first back bend as well. It's your first inversion. You could do some downward dogs with one leg lifted. So you're putting more load, more weight into the arms. And that's also part of the setup for getting up into handstand is the kick up. So you could do uh, one leg and then rest that one down and then do the other. So getting familiar, being okay with this, being okay with the amount of weight that's on the hands um, is all good setups to start with. And then set the knees back down. And then let's turn the other way. So now your feet are gonna be at the baseboard. So you've got downward dog weight in the hands, one leg up, a little more weight in the hands, and then this will be a half handstand at the wall. So let's walk you all the way back so the feet are touching the baseboard. This one, we're gonna keep the knees and hips in line and the shoulders and wrists in line. And it's going to feel a little tight. Actually for you, let's take your hands slightly more forward because that would make the side of your body more long because you have the ability to take your hands in closer. Let's do that again where you take your hands in closer and to still have your shoulders over the wrist, but you've now shortened the waistline. So go forward again and the hips stay, the shoulders stay and you're trying to make this part of you grow long. So we call the side bodies, hips back, shoulders forward. That's the side body long. So that's a basic stride. It should be your basic stride for coming into half handstand. There's a few different ways to measure the half handstands. This is my quick basic one. Um, if it's too intense, and I'll show you what that looks like when we get into it, then we could always come down and bring our hands a couple more inches out in front. But aim for this first and see what happens. So some of the work we did in Chaturanga is gonna be prep work to build strength in the upper body and also to teach you the foundation of your shoulders and the upper body. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, go back to the Chaturanga tutorial, review that a little bit more to get you a steady base in the upper part of the body. But he can from here melt the heart a little and get some engagement of the muscles on the back body. And then lift the knees up and you'd be in a downward dog, but it's gonna feel like a very short downward dog, not your normal downward dog. Now I wanna hold the arms strong like pillars of support, like they're staying fairly steady where they are and just kind of move the ribs and spine more and more to the back wall. This is where it seems like a very short downward dog. Then keeping this where it is, then take one foot at the wall, the level of your butt. So go a little higher. Now take the other foot to match. Keep the knees bent at first. Great, so this is putting more load, more weight. Just do what you can do there. You might hold it three seconds, maybe six seconds. If you cannot let the shoulders pop this way and the heart pop this way towards me, you keep them where they are, then you straighten the legs. And his tendency is gonna be quite strong to draw that in. So arms stay, shoulders stay, heart stays. You could draw in your core a little bit. Yeah, and then trying to hold the middle. That's where you learn that seesaw bit that we were talking about earlier. Great, so that's a 90 degree angle at the wall. You can do one leg lifted if you're feeling strong and comfortable here. Watch that it doesn't go too far back behind you, then switch legs, do the other one. He's already feeling some of this work. It's a lot more work in the upper body than regular handstand. And then set back down, come back down, and take a rest for a moment. So getting strong with that will help build some of your upper body strength and familiarity with coming upside down. And then, how do we get up? How do we kick up? How do we learn our basic foundation of getting into handstand? And this is some of my tips and tricks. Um, other people might have some other useful tips, but this is what seems to work well in our studio. So face the wall and take at least the hands, a hand's distance from the wall. So you can measure fingertips to the wall and then take your hands back. I'd say come back a little bit further. Okay. 
Foundation always first. So hands, spread the fingers, get the knuckle pads to press into the ground, and then get the tips of the fingers to claw the floor. If he only claws the floor, relax the knuckle pads, what might happen is the space underneath his knuckles starts to lift up off the floor, and then it gets put more into the wrist. So he pushes the knuckle pads down, and not just that, but he's using the fingertips too. And then it, it's a claw of the floor, strong. It builds integration of the muscles all the way up the arms. So you'll feel the muscles hugging to the bone. Then we're gonna keep the shoulders over the wrists, and we're gonna avoid this. We're swinging forward and back, so lean back a little, and lean forward a little. Too far forward, he's gonna clunk into the wall. So we're, I don't want this to be happening in the kick up of handstand. I'm gonna keep whatever I've just set. I'm gonna keep the hands, I'm gonna keep the shoulders, like chaturanga, we're finding all the muscles on the back body strong. And I'm not crashing my head down and I'm not necessarily looking to the sky, but maybe I'm looking up at a, t a tip point. If my hands were two bases of a triangle, then I'd look at the tip of the triangle forward. And I'll keep all of this as my foundation. So that's steady. Then don't change this, go into downward dog, which is gonna feel like a short downward dog again. Now the tendency is to lean further away from your hands again. That's gonna be the tendency. So come back, shoulders over the wrist. Now, one knee comes in like a sprinter's lunge. So you're gonna have the knee bent, pick whichever is your favorite knee, draw the knee in, yeah. So most people walk your foot a little further forward and plant the whole foot on the ground. If he has the whole foot on the ground and tries to kick up into this pose, he's more weight heavy going down to the ground. And he's gonna to have to use more of the swing to get up. If he can take your toes back a little further, heel up a little higher, knee bent a little more. Now he's got to spring up and down. Show the pelvis going down and up. Think of this like a basketball. It goes down and goes up, rather than a swing set going this way. So now he's got the momentum in this direction, this plane. So now, one, that leg that's back, now lift it to the sky. Straight leg, he's got the spring ability of this leg. Tone the muscles of this leg. Don't think about your foot kicking the wall. Think about this part of your thigh kicking the wall, because Here's your heart weight, it's centered. Here's your butt weight, bring it over the heart weight by going basketball down up. So now give a little bounce and hop the hips up. Yep, and he just keeps going and he keeps going. He's gonna bring the weight of his pelvis over his heart. Now give a bigger hop. Nice, great, nice. And he just keeps doing that until, you know, I usually say if you've come bent down to rest, if you haven't done handstand, you're gonna do about 1,008 of these kickings to eventually get up. Then you're probably gonna get up. So, um, so tendencies are to swing. Tendencies are also to, let's play with this back leg. So come back in the basic setup with a leg that was straight up to the sky. Now as you kick, this tendency is gonna be for this knee to bend and the foot to wanna kick the wall. So try to kick up with that, like your foot's gonna to touch the wall. Right. And usually if it does, it pushes you right back off the wall. And you're also thinking with your foot and not your pelvis. So go back and it's this part that goes over this part that lifts up to go over. Nice. By feeling the weight in your body, come back down. Like chaturanga, we had a sense that our weight was between our hands as we lowered down. The same in handstands. So do your downward dog again. In downward dog, here's some of his weight, goes here. That's where it's like the pendulum is dropping of his weight down. So to get here and lined up over here, he's gonna have to use a lot of swing and a lot of momentum. So that's why I have you bring your heart forward until you feel the weight right here. And then you walk in the little bits that you need, you do your spring lunge, you do your leg lift, you keep the feel of this weight and then feel this weight and start to kick up feeling the weight of your butt, trying to match the weight of the heart. Nice. Yes. Awesome. And then sit back down. That's great, that's the work. Now people get scared and they're afraid of crashing to the floor. So you'll crash to the floor if your elbows buckle, if they bend. So one trick is to strap your arms. So we wanna make them shoulders width apart. So let's see if that works for you. And you can actually bring it above your elbows. Let's do that. 
And this buckle part will sometimes unravel the strap. So I'm gonna move it so the buckle is not touching the body. And that looks about shoulders width, maybe for you a slight bit wider. And now come to that same setup, hands and knees. And now you can push out your arms against the strap and you know you won't bend them because it won't let you bend them. But it also might help you fire some of these outer muscles of the arms and give you a stronger pillar of a base. And then you can kick up from there. So that's one, one trick, right? Now, I like that at the very, very beginning, but I want um, you to be able to do it without the strap at some point. And then you're gonna have to learn how to hug in rather than push out. So take the strap off. You graduate from strap to blocks. Now everybody's arms width is different. So two blocks between the shoulders like this is good for me. Some guys have a little broader shoulders. Some people have a little broader shoulders and they may have to do a setup like this to be about shoulders width. So let's see what you need. So let's put those kind of thinking you're pretty close, but let's try this one. Let's do that for now. It just adds a little bit more width to the shoulders. So I'm gonna go a little bit below this crease of the elbow with both of those blocks. He's gonna squeeze into them, do his downward dog again. Now, if he has a tendency to buckle, then the blocks are gonna drop. But if he can keep hugging into the midline and keep the blocks from dropping or even separating their bottom bits, the bottom bits would be a little bit of separation there. So you have all sides of the blocks touching each other. Shoulders over the wrists, so their weight of the heart's more here. Squeeze in, walk in a little, one knee in sprinter's lunge, one leg straight, kick with the top of the thigh to get to the wall, and you just hug the middle. Super hug the middle, nice. He didn't lose his block, so then he's graduated. That means he's holding steady with his arms. That's good, rest back down. So then you graduate from that. Then the next last prop for handstand is a bolster. Because again, people want to move away from the wall and to the wall in this type of springy fashion. And they have to use a lot of that to get up. We use this to lean into, just to fall into essentially. So let's come, uh, we have to figure out the how far away we need to be from the wall. So let's start here roughly first. And then do your downward dog. We might be a little far, far away, but we'll try it. Come forward. Yeah. So let's come a little closer. Normally I have you look up, but this one, I'm going to actually have you bow a little and get the back of the skull to press into this pillow. Lift your downward dog again. Bow a little. Lean forward. Great. Yeah. So that is, might be a little too far forward, so he could come a little bit more forward with his fingers. So I'm watching to see how far his shoulders go over his wrists. If he's really looking at doing press handstand, he could lean that far. But for basics, just a little in line with the wrist or a little over the wrist is fine. And now, one knee in, one leg up. Lean into this, almost like you're falling into it with straight arms. Don't change the arms. And one leg kicks up. See how it goes. Nice. I let the head press back into the pillow a bit. And it also gives some uh, integrated core strength by letting the head go back. Awesome, try one more. Nice, that's great. It actually works your core a little bit more on that one. So rest back down. So those are some basic um, one, two, threes of how to start working on getting into your handstand at the wall, kicking at the wall. And we'll do another tutorial here in a second where we will talk about, well, now that you're up, how do we find balance away from the wall? So then that's another lifetime of practice. So we'll work on those tips next. Um, visit us at VancouverYogaCenter.com. See my Vimeo channel with some yoga classes. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to see more. And we will see you soon.